very low barrier to get into the Gronk Squad. That's crazy. We've committed to do the Daily Talk Show for 10 years. So, hi, guys. Hi, guys. Put it in the calendar. Oh, that one in. I'd just like to check the temperature in the room. I told you my squeegee story. It is outrageous. Come on, let's go. G'day, Trev. G'day, mate. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, it's perfect. You sound great. You're on, you're on, the, um, you're on the stream right now. Uh, Hello, stream. Hello, world. <laughs> What's going on? How good was that 3D deal flashback? <laughs> oh, were you watching? Were you watching that? <laughs> yeah, I was watching. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I don't think I've seen that full video. I think I saw bits uh-huh. of it maybe on Instagram or something. Uh-huh. Yeah, but see, not the I whole don't, thing. I yeah. don't think it was posted. If Trev, Trev yeah. would remember that. Yeah, yeah. His money we were, being spent. Yeah, yeah. pulled <laughs> over the top of his head. Certainly, I've never head. seen the champagne in the bath ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was spewing. I remember just being so spewing about that. <laughs> But um, we uh, we can laugh oh, at it so now. Funny. It was very yeah. good, um, mate. Uh, you're uh, giving away a car. Can you just tell us about that? Um, that's a good question. Uh, so I started getting all these ads in my Facebook feed for all these exotic car giveaways, and there was this one. Certainly in Sydney, it was um, proceeds for the rural fire service. And I'm thinking, <laughs> why is the rural fire service like your CFA giving away a yeah. bloody McLaren? Yeah. Anyway, it turns out it's just some. Um, I'm not going to say dodgy, but some, you know, individual who's found a way to find a fundraising mechanism, but also a way of selling his own car, right? Mm -hmm. And so now all I get in my Facebook feed are these ads for blokes making money raffling cars. That's what they're doing, making heaps of money. And I just went, you know Mm -hmm. what? I can't afford a Lamborghini, but Mm -hmm. I'm doing okay. It's been an okay year after all Mm -hmm. the drama. I'm going to buy a car. I'm just going to Mm -hmm. give it away, like free entry and stuff. So I wanted to buy a Kia Picanto. So mm-hmm. it's the only thing you can get for twenty thousand dollars with wireless Apple CarPlay, which is good tech. Yeah. And um, it kind of wasn't. Uh, it was a, it's a cool little car, but it's not really an every every person car. I was driving mm-hmm. the Hyundai. Well, this is a really cool car. I rang the people at Hyundai and said, "Listen, I want to give away a car." And they went, "Listen, mate. I mean," and I went, "No, no, stop you right there. I want to buy it. <laughs> I want to buy yeah. a car, but yeah. I really like a good discount. Like I can't afford the twenty four grand or whatever it is for the car." And they went, "Listen, mm-hmm. we'll work on it." They came back with a price that was. Reasonable. I went and bought the car, so I'm just I'm just doing it to build. You know, read, listen, watch is my thing. You know, I just want people, more people to watch, more people to read, more people to listen, and just reward fans. Yeah, bit of how fun. Do, Why not? How, how uh, so? How does it work in regards to the 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 chance draw thing? Like, I know yep. that you have to get some like. Um, yeah. Uh, that was through, the budget. Re- it cost me two and a half thousand dollars for those permits. Re- and wow. so, what does yep. the permit look like? What do they require? Of you? Um, what I did was I went to um, might have been a radio station, you know, terms mm-hmm. and conditions, and I copied it and yeah. I just changed everything because I thought a lawyer's done this right, so I'll just mm-hmm. change all the bits, yeah, um, and just edited everything. And then I, I found a company that does all the submissions for you to New South Wales, uh, Victoria, and SA. And once you've got those three, you're allowed to do competitions anywhere in the country. Um, and yeah, they they I was trying to do a charity thing where you. Um, you donate to Gotcha for Life, which is Gus Wallen's kind of um, men's mental fitness program. And I wanted people to donate and then with their receipt number, get extra entries in the draw. Oh, but apparently cool. you're not allowed to do that under right, the gaming regulations. So uh-huh. in the end, it's just a, you know, click, put in your email address and you've got one entry in the draw. But what I did is I use a thing called Gleam. It's a really cool kind of competition platform, Aussie based. Mm-hmm. And I give a code word in a podcast. I'll give a code word during YouTube videos. I'll give a code word on the website. And I'm also probably hopefully three or four weeks away from launching an app, there'll mm-hmm. be a unique code word in everyone's app. And those code words get you more entries. Oh, great. So if you're a prize pig and you just filled in the form and got one entry, mm-hmm. there's going to be people that blitz you with 200 entries because they listen, watch, and read everything. So yeah, okay. it's just a really fun, mm-hmm. you know, user engagement thing because I get really good fan engagement in the Facebook group. That's uh-huh. that's where I do everything. It's just it's a fun group, really loyal, really passionate about what I do and what technology is. So yeah, it's a cool fun, you know, giveaway. I'm um, mad. Th- th- I mean we we <laughs> talked about free stickers on this show once and we had someone contact us from uh, America somewhere. Oh yeah. But what we think it was someone who was scraping you've got the free yeah, you got stickers. <laughs> you got stickers. But you're OG. not a, you're you're not some sort of uh, you know, uh, a sticker collector that yeah. doesn't listen to the show, or someone um, you know looking for the word free yeah. online and then entering anything. Yeah, bizarre. Yeah. So but what we, happens we, is there's a site called Oz Bargain, and and people yeah. that find really cool deals on dishwashers or whatever it is, they put them up there so everyone knows about it, and they do yeah. that as well. They're like giving away a car. Here's how to enter. Click the link, 
and I reckon 20% of my entries thus far have come from Ausbargain. And good on them. I'm happy with them, but I know that they won't read my emails. They won't click the links. Like it's no real yeah. value to me. So mm -hmm. hopefully the overwhelming mass of actual fans yeah. will, will, will overwhelm them and hopefully win the car. And then you hope it's one of those that actually wins it, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I've got well, AFC stickers talking. put on it. Sick. Looks good. Oh, that's great. I was um, just talking the other day about yellow pages and thinking about what people spent on yellow pages back in the day. Yeah. Is this almost like, because people would spend 20 grand on fucking yellow pages. Mm. Is this almost yeah, yeah, yeah. like that version in 2021? Part of it for me was also all the drama with Facebook earlier in the year. And I was super vocal about that everywhere, uh -huh. every media outlet. I reckon I'd, I spoke to more radio stations, like in terms of individual radio stations, than mm -hmm. any event I've ever done before that morning that Facebook kicked news off the platform. Mm -hmm. um, and I did videos that went, like in my world, viral, like crazy numbers. And I was super passionate about it. And I, I said, I'm never spending money on Facebook again. Like I'm never yeah. going to spend $20, $50 or $200 to boost a post again because I've learned that I don't control that audience. Mm -hmm. They're not mine. I've, I've spent thousands building the audience by boosting posts, but 18,000 people can like my page, but I only get to, you know, post something to 1,500 of them at a time. It's it's a bit of a pain. So I've invested in an app, so I'm building an app. That's instead of spending on Facebook. And then, yeah, the, the car thing is another way of, I mean, it's radio. You yeah, and I, yeah, we're, yeah. we're all the yeah, same yeah. us, yeah, Tommy, yeah. Josh, and me. We're <laughs> yeah. all radio people at heart. Yeah. This yeah. is a radio promo. Yeah, like, exactly. oh, you know what I want to do? I want Tommy to come up, take the car, and go black thundering it. You know, give some Coke away. <laughs> yeah. Icy cold cans, <laughs> Coca Cola. <laughs> that was a terrible switching. Some of the worst switching. Some of the worst switching. I, I was actually promo for Bird Dog. Of you, you're over here. So <laughs> oh, good. Oh, that's I finally fine. just saw that's that. Um, the uh, and and so in yeah, regards yellow pages. to so, yeah, the app stuff. When it yeah, comes yeah. to um, building an app, there's heaps of people who spend a bunch of cash on trying to build an app and then they go to the wrong company and blow all their money. Mm. How do you build an app and not- Cheers for that build up because I don't know that I haven't blown all my money yet. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what you I too. did. So my, my idea was I, I don't want an app where you read EFTM content. That's on mm -hmm. the internet. You can get that in the browser. What I yeah. want is an app that allows me to have push notifications to those who choose it. Yeah. and widgets. I think widgets yeah. are the coolest thing on smartphones. Mm -hmm. um, Android's had it for years. Apple, they just look slick and they work really well. So I went to freelancer.com and I went, you know what, I'll spend, I just went five grand. I don't know what it is. I'll spend five grand. I want an, I want an app that does just these things. Yeah. And I paid for the recruiter and everything. And they found me one company and I'm having this back and forth with this company. I went, can you send me some app examples so I can do some downloads mm -hmm. and have a look? No, we've signed NDAs with the companies we work with. And I went, fuck <laughs> off. I'm not going to hand over five grand, let alone any more, yeah. if you can't show me your work. Yeah. So in the end, I'm not developing an Android app because I haven't uh -huh. found an Android developer yet, but I found uh, an Apple developer who was, in fact, one of the Worldwide Developer Conference, Apple's big developer show mm -hmm. every year. Yeah. He was one of their scholars. So a young kid, he's like 18. He was 16 oh, when cool. I first met him. And he, like, he's doing it at a, he's, I'm paying him, but I, yeah. I, I know that he should be charging me more. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, uh, dropping a few grand on an app like this, I think it looks slick, it's fun, mm -hmm. and, you know, I don't know whether it's going to work, but I think it's a point of difference because it's a, everyone's the same on the yeah, web. Yeah. So I'm just trying to do something a little bit different. Do you have an idea of what you want to get as far as downloads, like what what working will look like? I, I'd be – I'd love to have a couple of thousand straight up, like real early, mm -hmm. especially given that the comp – So, and I'll, I'll let you know here, there's the maximum of 200 entries per person in the comp there's going to be 75 entries if you download the app. So uh, I'm yeah. super incentivizing the app yeah. download. If I could get a couple of thousand app downloads straight away and if I could get to five, if I have 10, 10,000, I'll be, I'll be dancing in the street and investing in an Android <laughs> app straight away. And anything above that, it'll just be awesome. Because I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not one for big audiences. I'm for, yeah. you know, Targeted. engaged audiences. Yeah. I yeah. want yeah. people who are into what we do. I just don't want people random. So that's yeah. the way I always kind of target things. We were just talking before about how uh, Apple has uh, an event coming out, uh, coming up, and that uh, it actually got leaked via Siri. I don't know if you you heard that yeah. bit, but uh, <laughs> um, a few hours before, yeah, yeah. Do you know uh, what they're expecting for for that Apple announcement? 
It's the same as every bloody announcement. No one really mm. knows, but yeah. we can speculate pretty heavily based on rumours. Like Fennec and I, the podcast we do every week, we recorded last night, um, we spent 30 minutes speculating. Mm -hmm. Like it's yeah. just, you know, what you can do is speculate on anything. But I'll tell you right now, there'll be iPads, brand new iPads. Mm -hmm. iPad Pro, iPad Pro 12.9 inch, so the big one. Um, so this guy here will get replaced by a new one. Look the same, better camera, better processor, and a whole new screen, mini LED, which is a new technology coming to screens these days. And then I think there'll be a new iPad mini because there hasn't been one for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, I think they'll spend a lot of time talking about the new Apple Find My, which is their kind of tile tracker. Um, yep. These here are new Belkin headphones that are launching in August in Australia, I think. Um, that will have the Find My Tracker built into them so that you can find them if you lost them. They'll so talk a bit about that. Actually, what is yeah. it using? So it's, they don't have GPS. Is it using like low power Bluetooth, Bluetooth or what's yeah, the deal? Yeah, so low energy Bluetooth. So these headphones and your key ring constantly emitting a Bluetooth signal. And uh -huh. the power of the Find My app is you go, well, where's my bloody headphones? You open the app, you press a button and they go beep, beep, and you go, oh, there they are. They're under the couch or whatever. But if you lose them at the park or you leave them at the gym, there's millions of people with iPhones, right, uh -huh. and Macs and, and iPads. Every single one of those Apple devices, as long as they're running iOS 14, when they go past or near these keys or other items, it kind of triggers a, a location ping. And so if you say it's lost, the thing will then let you know where it is without anyone knowing. Apple doesn't know, Belkin doesn't know, the person that walked past doesn't know. You know where your keys or item is. Very cool. Yeah. It yeah, is wow. really cool. I mean, I've seen a video of a... Um, a dog, and you can hear the um, find find my AirPods going off inside its tummy. I think that's a, that's a I bullshit. Think it's, I yeah, think yeah. it'd be muffled, it but it would be <laughs> funny. It would be funny. Well, you though. see, you see similar ones where it's like they've got music. They they EQ it to make it sound like it's in <laughs> their guts, like it's yeah, in, can, in their gut. Yeah. <laughs> um, Trev, uh, is there anything that is uh, a piece of technology that you have that you're blown away by how stupid a function of it is? Like, it's easy to go on an app and go, how did they not uh, introduce um, thumbnail selection on Square videos in Instagram fucking mm -hmm. 10 years ago, or whenever it first came out? It seems like the easiest thing they could have done, but obviously, from mm -hmm. a tech perspective, there's things that are harder yeah. and at play. Yeah. Is there anything that just blows your mind that you've been banging on for years that a company hasn't fixed? You know what? I can't think of something off the top of my head, Tommy. Because um, you don't use shit tech like listen. I do. <laughs> Well, I think, listen, no. <laughs> I think like, one thing that comes to mind with me is um, back in the day, the like just having the, the issue with the copy and paste thing, then yeah. for yeah. many years the iPhone didn't do copy and paste. Like okay. Android, yeah. like how ridiculous yeah. was that? Back, it, was only, it was only six or seven years ago that it was a big deal that Android had copy and paste and iPhone yeah. didn't. <laughs> um, they've finally merged a bit so we don't have those ridiculous things. Uh -huh. But, you know, I think that some stuff, you know, it's just the simple things. Sometimes operating a TV shouldn't be as hard as they make it. Uh -huh. Sometimes the op – like, my biggest bugbear is, is actually more likely in a car. Like, I was driving a Toyota Hilux recently, number one selling car in Australia. You know, Toyota Hilux, tradies love them. And the Toyota asked me yesterday, they said, oh, when are you going to publish a review? I said, look, two problems. One, I didn't get any photos because it was pissing down rain and yeah. I don't do reviews without my own photos. Secondly, I got nothing positive to say about it. It was awful. Like I, I just didn't. The, it was slow, responsive. It was mm. like someone designed it ten years ago, and they've gone. We've got to get our ten-year payback on that investment. Like yeah, it's just yeah. you got to redesign it. I'm sorry, folks. If your car, if you plug an Apple phone or an Android phone into a car and you get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, you immediately go, "Oh, that's better. It's yeah. real. It's familiar. It's icons as opposed to menus and all that other bullshit." Sometimes mm. the operating system in cars is just way too complex uh -huh. and should be much more simplified. In fact, I, if I was selling cars, I would just go, it's got Apple and Android if you plug it in and mm -hmm. there's just a radio otherwise. That's all yeah. it is. Everything else that, is in your phone, people. <laughs> in an Uber this morning and it um, was a old, like a Mercedes, not too old, but it had a, a, a full number sequence like, a oh, dial pad yeah, yeah, yeah. on the actual yeah. display. And I was like, that is that is aged. Any yeah. display you know what's is fun, aged. Tommy? You'll love this when when Bodie and your daughter-to-be are a little bit older. But, like, it's amazing having your kids with you now. Like, my youngest is nine, uh, nine and a half, you'd say, I guess. Um, and we get in a car and he's like, so I've got this big Genesis, this new four-wheel drive. Genesis is like the luxury yeah. version of Hyundai. And 
I had one a week ago and he got he as soon as he saw it in the driveway, he thought it was a Bentley because it looks like one. And I went, nah, buddy, good luck. But cool, well identified, it looks like one. Gets in every part of it, he's diving around. And today we got him one. He looks in the back and he goes, This one's got um automatic up and down for the third row, Dad. And I went, What did the other one have? He goes, just the second row. And I went, Oh, buddy, this is this is just it's, the, it's parenting win, you know, when your kids are able to, you know, identify the things. Like I was doing a, um, I had the kids with me this morning. I was doing a, uh, a piece for Nine News, like you know, it's a, what they call a simsat. So it's just me and a cameraman, and the reporters on the phone, and they're asking me about privacy. And I was explaining how on an Apple phone, the little green dot comes up if the camera's in use, and the orange dot comes up if the audio's in use. We stop yeah. recording, and both my kids, Victoria and Harry, nine and ten, go. Did you know that, Dad? That though, if you're on a FaceTime call or something, it changes from orange to green constantly. And I went, Oh no, I didn't. Thanks for being, you know, thanks for jumping in on my my little news session here. Yeah, it's a great it's so- thing when your kids actually start to you know, love what you do and engage with it. It's, mate, it's awesome. Yeah, it's um, one part privilege, one part the future because it's like <laughs> any problem that they can, they, they just don't want that annoyance. Of, think about it. So what about this one? Um, Apple's, I, uh, Apple TV's mm-hmm. remote. Uh-huh. That yeah. thing I'm forever changing, stopping, it's sliding down mate, the couch, rubbing my bum. Tip, number one tip is to go into the settings of your iPhone and customize the control center. You know the control center where you get all your brightness and everything? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. make sure that your Apple TV remote is in there. So you've always got the Apple TV remote on your yeah. phone. So typing, whenever a password comes up, you just type it on your phone. Like just that yeah, remote, so I don't even know where ours is. We've all got yeah, iPhones. Yeah. Man, it is. That is. I, I have used it once. I've, I'm a dumbass for not using it more. Yeah. Make it every I mean, well, day, Tommy. Well, one, <laughs> one thing that I need to work out is like I've got a couple of Apple TVs and they all get the same names, and so then I end up. I mean, this is a this is first world. What a problem. first world problem! <laughs> <laughs> all the Apple, That's all like the I say. You know, our biggest. I'll tell you, a first world problem. Right, yeah. this is massive first world. So with an Xbox, if uh-huh. you want to play multiplayer, you have to have Xbox Live or Gold or whatever it's called, right? So I've got that on my account, and my kids have each got Xbox accounts, so you can manage their screen time and all that bullshit. Um, if you've got two Xboxes, you can set one of them as the home device. Uh-huh. And so you don't, like the parent doesn't have to log in. It can just be Harry there. But on the other device, I need to log in and then mm-hmm. Victoria can play on that make and multiplayer. Yeah. In my house, the thir- first world, third world problem, it's really first world, is I've got four Xboxes. Um, so I can't be playing on the Xbox in here if they're playing out their multiplayer or kick them off. Oh, like no. we've got so many Xboxes <laughs> that my kids are certainly privileged. But it's the best thing because then it's like they argue, they do something wrong. I say, listen. You need to understand that every other kid in your class, they're lucky to have an Xbox, and you've got fucking three of them. <laughs> <laughs> this, is the, this is the home phone knocked off. Mom, get off the portable. I'm on Tommy, this. I took my kids to the Telstra Museum last Friday. <laughs> and we could go today. You're, you're a bunch it's, of fun, it's actually, <laughs> Mate, here's the thing. I had to go because we're doing a Today Show story, and I had the kids. So my wife and I do, in the holidays, we do like one day on, one day off, so I'm – I'm off today. The kids are out yeah. on screen time right yeah. now, just so you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, They're visiting up. And I was meant to record this thing. <laughs> I was meant to record this segment on Thursday, my day of work. But the Today Show had to bump it back to Friday. I went, okay, no worries. I'll bring the kids. So I said, mm-hmm. kids, I need you to come with me. It's going to be boring. I'm really sorry, but we'll get Maccas on the way home. Like, treat. Yeah. No yeah. worries, Dad. So we go there, and it's, it, mate, it's, for me, it's amazing. It's old mobile phones, it's old pay phones, it's old telephones, it's, uh, old exchanges where you actually patch calls through and it all works. Like they've got phones you pick up and you dial a two digit number and the one up there rings. Anyway, kids are there and I'm talking, showing them stuff, I'm reminiscing and I'm just realizing how fucking old I am. I'm going used to do this. And you guys were talking a couple of episodes ago about like telecards or phone cards yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like that was exactly what I was talking to my kids about. I used to have a card that I'd use to key in a 16 digit number and it would ring mum reverse charges onto her <laughs> bill so that I could tell her I'm at the station. Oh, that's great. Anyway, yeah. so we, we do this story, great fun, blah, 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 for me. We get in the car and I said, thanks, guys. I really, you were well behaved. I really appreciate it. And Victoria goes, oh, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. And I went, are you, are you serious? She goes, well, it was like really cool because they were playing with stuff. They were playing mm-hmm. with technology of old and they actually were kind of experienced because they'd never heard of Dalton before. And I said to them, I said, just imagine for a second, you're all on Minecraft, right? We've got yeah. a realm in Minecraft where we can all play. I said, you're all playing in the realm. And then mum comes home, picks up the phone. And the, the world drops out. The internet drops out. 
That's what I used to deal with. My sister would come home, pick yeah. up the phone, and I'd be kicked off the internet. Yeah. Like, they just don't have any appreciation for how awesome we have it today. It's just. How did they fix that problem? I remember there was some issue, ADSL. some way of. So that was just the complete so fix. Because we had, it went we from had dial up, which was a modem that plugged into the yeah. phone line, and that, like a fax, it would just use the phone and make that noise. And then came along ADSL, which stands for Josh might know asynchronous data something line, right? And that meant that if you put that little filter, you had to put a little filter mm -hmm. on the line where your phone was, and then the the modem still connected directly in, yeah. so the modem and the phone could operate at the same time. That's right, yeah. And a lot of people had real issues if they didn't if they didn't have that filter and they're like, why am I getting <laughs> such slow Why, why is this happening? Like, you yeah, have yeah, the filter. Yeah. Like back yeah. even 10 years ago, the most common phone call on the radio was, my phone, I'm like, have you got the filter? The little box, is it next <laughs> yeah. to the phone line? No, you don't. Go and get one from Dick Smith. What yeah. about um, uh, back in the old day, what about when you could be on a portable and be picking up next door neighbor's phone call? Mm -hmm. Did you get that? Oh, Remember yeah. that, Trev? I, I, you just get you used to get a lot of cross lines, even if it wasn't yeah. just a neighbor's portable. Remember just getting cross lines? Yeah. Someone well, else's uh, windy, phone Windy, like call? weather, bad weather would p make it happen well, so more. Our, yeah. um, oh. So we, we got some really uh, cheap uh, wireless microphones to be able to use for the, uh, the putting uh, putt for a cup. Uh, downstairs, like real, like hundred and thirty dollars for two wireless mics, and what are this UHF? Give them a J car. No, yeah, but we got it. Like I saw them, and they look similar to the ones I got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's a store did. DJ, like just like real, like yeah. karaoke sort of things. But they have, uh, I think it's UHF. Is it saying UHF on the on the front? Uh, just there, teach on the box where the um, speaker is. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. yeah, just here. Yeah, I think it's UHF, um, and they uh, they're so funny because it remind it's that classic like cutting out thing that you don't get with the 2.5 uh 2.4 yeah. gigahertz stuff right yeah and i think the the other fun one was um do you remember you'd have a sibling on the line but you'd have two lines in the house and i had one in my room and you'd pick it up if you pick up slow enough just gently enough they mm. wouldn't hear the click and you could yeah. put your hand over and you could listen in <laughs> <laughs> yeah well but i actually sure. think the best one the best one was remember dick smith had those um electronics kits you'd go on your soldering and you know learn uh -huh. electronics yeah. I remember making, you know, things like a doorbell or whatever, but the best one was a wireless FM microphone, which is a bug. <laughs> so you'd build this thing, you'd put it in your sister's room, tune the radio to 92.1 or whatever the hell the signal was, and you could it was a bug. You could listen. <laughs> it was a microphone broadcasting in FM and you could listen to what's happening in the other room. <laughs> I remember um, one of the first things I got from the internet was a, a device called the TV be gone. Fuck, that's an and old person was, thing to say. Like, was, you know, getting something from the internet. The yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the just first thinking things. about that, the first thing I got from the internet. Well, like, it, yeah, first three. So I remember the first thing I got was a really small slate, like clapperboard that oh, you yeah. would you would see in Hollywood or whatever. But the th this was a really <laughs> important lesson because I thought it was a full-size clapperboard, <laughs> bought it on eBay, and it was just a macro shot. And so I got it and it was a little, like... <laughs> Uh, wooden thing. I was going to use it in my films. It was almost like a key ring. But um, no, the TV be gone. What it would do, Trev, is it was just an infrared um, signal and you could point it at any TV and turn it off. And yeah. so I just walk around the oh, neighborhood turning yes. off everyone's TV. Well, do you know when that was great? Um, a few years ago, I've uh, probably not got one here because I've taken all the phones to the office now, but uh, there was a couple of phones, HTC, even Samsung had an infrared blaster on the phone. Yes. And, you, you know, you could just go, I've got an LG TV. Mate, you go to the airport, you say, LG. Yeah. Change the channel on the TV. So no, no dramas way. at all. Oh, what it's about the, um, the what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. JB's here. <laughs> I think you need to go down to the front door, Georgie. Oh, go down to the front go. door, mate. Oh, really? oh, oh really? what's at the front door? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we can cut to the camera at the front door. Oh, oh there is something. There is something. There is something on the front door. We're Here getting we a lot yeah. of um, a I, lot of. I was getting phone calls, and I'm like, uh, "This is not happening." It's an yeah, Uber that's delivery, why right? Dumped it. Here we go. Yeah, JB, you there, mate? Yep, I'm here. Okay, great, JB. Oh my god, the front door camera. <laughs> yeah, this is for us. What is that? This is for Josh or George? Trevor. George. Trevor, Trevor, Trevor. Trevor. Josh, George, Trevor. Trevor. <laughs> yeah, great. Thank you. Okay. Old mate's like, who the hell is this bloke? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so sus. here's what I've done. I've just gone, you know what? If I was still broadcasting after how many hours you done now? For we're we're seven what? to go. Right. So that's seven, eight and a half. Uh, nine hours yeah. Here, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd yeah. need snacks. I would have gone to a yeah. servo and just gone uh -huh. hard on the snacks. So, <laughs> oh, Jesus, Trev. Literally, there should be ice creams, there should be Ben and Jerry's. Oh, yes. Snacks. 
Just they look the golden gate time I don't like, but uh, they look like something new. So I thought, what are you try though? They're like a Jess. chewy Tuesday, but it's a gay time oh, Friday. This is, this, thanks, Trevor. <laughs> uh, um, caramel milk. Oh, twirls. That's, Snickers. I mean, that's the kind of... Josh, you'd appreciate it. You, you oh, would have done is, this is, time. You pull up and you just go, yeah, listen, yeah. I'm just... I'm going hard. Oh, no no does. No does. <laughs> 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 I reckon I might have a heart attack if I had one of these. <laughs> My chest hurts. Josh was talking just, about that yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I could definitely slam a no-dose. Mm. Uh, GB, <laughs> get real weird. Who knew that you could buy no-dose from a, essentially a server yeah. or a convenience Truckies store? Truckies do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, this is the future. Uh, GB, do we have anything that we can throw back to? Do you want to um, go into the, um, the uh, archivist cupboard? Yeah, I'll just pop into the cupboard ah, now. Yeah, the archivist cupboard, yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, all right. I'm in here now. I found a couple of things ah! I can play. Um, so maybe I'll start with one and then we can finish on one. Yeah, great. Okay. Great idea. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come out of the cupboard now. Hey, guys, how are you going? Yeah, good, George. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we started the show, we played a little bit about Dill uh, having a... Well, should I give some context? Well, yeah, so, so 3D Dill was our uh, intern and uh, uh, Trev was nice enough to uh, organise for him to go up to Sydney. Uh, Trev organised the flights, the accommodation, everything. Business class. Uh, business class. It was it was luxe and a very nice hotel as well. Uh, I've got to say, uh, uh, 3D Dill had never been, I don't think, in a very fancy hotel before. He didn't understand how the minibar worked. And so over the period of an uh, evening, he smashed everything. Everything that was in, uh, ate everything and drank everything that was in the hotel minibar. And I get a call from Trev being like, mate, um, it's, it's all good. Like, I'm, I'm not, not mad. I'm just surprised. Um, there's a $300, was it $300 bill? Something like that. 300 It was more for just on the minibar. Oh, I think it might have had a seven in front of it. Just off the top <laughs> of my head. Seven, yeah, it was, it was a, it was, it was ridiculous. And so, anyway, you refused. You refused to take our money for it. Mm-hmm. And I remember yep. just being spewing um, uh, during during that time. But uh, I thought it was funny. I mean, you yeah, know, right, yeah. who would have who would have thought that would happen, right? I mean, yeah. I was just I just thought I don't want him to have to pay that. You know, those incidentals that you get yeah. charged hundred twenty bucks or something. I thought <laughs> Inc- I'll put my card down. It's all good. <laughs> and, and he's literally eating the mini bar. <laughs> the and the thing. other thing too is it's like it, when he was doing it, it's like, oh man, it's here, so I might as well use it. He's just putting it on <laughs> it over his head. It was, he didn't even in, enjoy it. Um, and so uh, what do we have, GB? Well, so this bit is just basically you called him to, to do a bit of a test and be like, oh, mate, how's the experience? What was it like? So what this you- is before, yeah. So, so Trev, you, um, I think that you called me and there was a bit like we didn't tell 3D Man, Dill still straight didn't know, away. So you, yeah, yes. you had to break into it. Yeah. Yes. And so what is um, so this bit is basically you've told him that he's you know he's they're not free. Yeah. And you're just getting him to read out what he ordered. Sure. And um <laughs> and so you you guys did the calculations based on just general maths, but yeah. I think it ends up being more than what it. Yeah. Is. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Here we go. Uh, here it is. White wine, beer. <laughs> Sparkling water, orange juice, Ferrero Rocher's, Cadbury of chocolate, um, Toblerone bar. I'm trying to think what else there was. It's all right. It's on I the mean, bill. It's on the bill. Mr. Nice Shepherd, read out the total cost of the mini bar. That little uh, champagne bath dill, $126. <laughs> Just with the champagne. No way. <laughs> that's a dill. That's a total of $183. What was your so you've heard you've you've obviously you're checking out. Yeah. They would have told you well, at what point clearly like we've gotten you you've been uh, thinking about this I reckon all day have you? Uh, I tried to keep it out of my mind. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> Josh is so pissed. So That's you being so oh, pissed. Yeah, yeah. That's you oh, furious. God. That's a very expensive bath. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, that was a very expensive. He also bar. mentioned just before that that you'd organised him like Uber Black gift <laughs> yeah, cards yeah. to get to the airport. Oh, so right. he um, he really made the most of it. Trev, I did actually organise that. I remember trying to 
I was trying to make something of it for him. I was trying to yeah. like properly X wing and show off, right? And uh, yeah. <laughs> I think that I, oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I organised for Uber to send me some vouchers. So I'm, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's not that's not that's not on my account. So I don't give a rat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, are you you know with the partner you talk about what you're spending your money on? Um, did you have to explain to your wife what the fuck happened? <laughs> <laughs> No, you see, Tommy. Um, I live in a world where I operate a couple of businesses. Uh, I have EFTM, <laughs> True Long Media, and then I have another account that used to be those business accounts. And then there's my family accounts. My okay. wife has no idea what okay. I. Okay, business expense. Yeah, where um, are you buying the Lego from? Which accounts that? <laughs> that's, uh, that's from EFTM because I review it. And it's very important yeah. to be able to review products. Oh, yeah, um, no, definitely. I bought a three hundred and fifty dollars set of Lego a couple of, couple of months ago, a Nintendo, and. I just thought, you know what, I'll make a YouTube video because then it's a proper yeah. write-off, okay? Right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's content. Oh, ABC, folks, always be contenting. <laughs> always be contenting. <laughs> Man, uh, if I mean, you've been uh, part of our journey for a very long time. Like, uh, yeah, um, when did you – what was the first episode, Trev, that you listened to? Around 20. I, I wasn't yeah. live for the squeegee. Um, <laughs> so I'm post-14, 15. So, yeah, I'm, I'm saying around 20. And then, and I, like I, I was so there was a period there where um, my my commute because I don't I work from home, but because I do the Today Show pretty much you know three or four times a week back then, um, like I was able to listen literally to every episode and have time to spare. Um, mm-hmm. But what my biggest problem was, and I, I've spoken to Josh about this, I literally just stopped listening last year because of COVID, not because mm-hmm. I didn't want to, but because it didn't fit into my life anymore. I don't mm-hmm. listen to podcasts any time outside the car. Just mm-hmm. never. I don't ever have headphones on and listen to podcasts. It's my driving thing. It's either music or podcasts. And so I never drove anywhere more than four. My office is four minutes down the road and I was doing the Today Show from there. I was working from there or here. I didn't drive. So I literally missed, you know, a large part of the COVID, you know, hype in terms of the show and all the things you did. You like, missed so GB. A lot, but you, you, you don't know who the was fuck GB is. Email, wants, who the fuck's GB? <laughs> 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 I literally went, oh, who's this guy? <laughs> it was like, what's going on? I had no idea what was happening. It was so confusing to me when I tried to come back in and then I felt distant. I came yeah, back yeah. in and went, oh, well, my family's moved on from me. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, yeah, so, but, yeah, I, I, you know, the trip, I think Josh's overseas trip was, Mm-hmm. was a kind of – I think for you guys, you'll look back, and this sounds like the old guy in the room speaking, but I've done more than a 1,000 episodes of, of podcasts, my own and mm-hmm. two blokes talking tech, over 10 years. Yeah. Um, so I've hit the 10-year milestone already, and it is – it's super rewarding because, you know, it's, it's a milestone. But we never set that milestone, whereas you've actually set a milestone. I think yeah. you'll look back year after year on that period of time where the dedication that it took to do – hours so tommy mm-hmm. getting up early or josh getting up early you know week to week yeah. day to day to make it work was was you two establishing a genuine um commitment to the show mm-hmm. and i think that as listeners because if you listen back to every episode in the month before the trip there was a bit of we might do every day it wasn't yeah, definitely yeah. going to happen yeah and it we wasn't until you got there that you realized <laughs> you know you could and mate let's be honest the star of the show is actually brie because <laughs> i don't know if there's any other partner on the planet, and Tommy, forgive me, but I don't even think Amy would jump nah. at you dedicating your time in your holidays to that kind of commitment. <laughs> yeah, well, there was a there was a lot of um, running around uh, Greek islands trying to find sim cards <laughs> for, for data, like a drug but, uh, dealer, but you know, podcast. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually should. I'm sure there would have been a better way. I'm sure I could have gotten one good sim. And you know, well, Vodafone, you know, Vodafone, you always yeah, the Vodafone pushing Vodafone Roaming with it. Right now, yeah, that would have been perfect. Since COVID, <laughs> I'm <brought> Vodafone <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as I wasn't traveling, like I don't need yeah. to use them anymore. I switch carries yeah. every month now. It's awesome. Yeah. Do but, you, you know, really? you do spend money. Are you really uh, yeah, switch it? In the last three months, I've, I've changed from Telstra to Optus. Now I'm on Boost Mobile. Um, in a couple of months, I'll probably change to, I want to change to uh, one of the Optus MBNOs. What do you It's really interesting. Well, the, the, the transition process, because I say to people all the time, it's one of my favourite things to say on the radio and TV is switch carriers. You can take your number and you can save money. But yeah. I, I did it once in six years because I was just stuck mm-hmm. on Vodafone because I needed it to travel. You know, switching to Optus was a nightmare, like a uh-huh. legit nightmare. It was As it was in painful. the actual transition process or just the, the reception? You know, trying to get them on live chat uh-huh. and all this kind of stuff. Mm. Just It wasn't a good process porting my number over. but I And I got really shitty with it and I went, no, no. Keep going because I want to try the network. 
in the end, I was only with them for six days because there's bugger all <laughs> coverage here. And this is oh, where I God. do a lot of my phone calls with radio. So I just I had to ditch them. Ditch switching yeah. to Boost Mobile, six minutes. Six minutes yeah. from putting wow. the SIM card in, going to the website, and I was it was live. Isn't that crazy? And you keep your phone number and you can save money. I, I just it's just so easy to do. So and I you know, part of me there's this, you know, um, problem that I have where I don't spend money on tech, right? So I say to people, Oh, buy this router, it's you know, sixteen hundred dollars. It's great. <laughs> I didn't pay for it. They fucking gave it to me, dude. Yeah. I've been at, I've been telling people to buy a vacuum and a robot <laughs> vacuum, but I didn't pay for it, so I'm I'm that guy as well. But someone has to be the person that that experiences it and and talks yeah. about it. And so what I try and do whenever I can is also put my money where my mouth is. So I I I spend a lot of money. I mean, my wife has no idea the money I spend, but I spend a lot of money on stuff. Um, the decorations of the office are amazing, but you know that Lego, just different things. Because sometimes, like I pay for my Spotify, Apple Music, Netflix, Stan, and Disney, because I can get them all for free. But there's just there's going to be a narc on Twitter who says, "Yeah, you can get it all for free, you prick." And I'm like, "Piss off! I pay for it all." So yeah, I just want to yeah. have that comeback. I want to yeah. be able to say to people that my life isn't about freebies. I spend as much as I can when I can. I bought a new car, cost me sixty grand. I'm like, I'm. I've got a lease as well. I got a, a loan. You know, you. It's sometimes you got to make it clear to people you're real and you do normal things. So switching mobile plans to me is just a, a grounding thing. Keeps me also, grounded. Also, the other thing too is if you're always after the freebie then people will expect freebies from you. But if you set the expectation yeah. that you're paying for it and all that sort of thing, then you can charge for your service as well for, you know, for certain clients. I don't know if you ever lived that way, but I, I don't think I live that way, but I always think, you know, you got to, is it you got to look rich to be rich or you got to look uh -huh. successful to be successful? Like I've, I, Josh, you, you and I are very similar. I generally think uh -huh. we were separated at birth somewhere because like we were talking the other day about Melbourne Geek and having uh -huh. stickers on the car and stuff. Like yeah. that's me. I, I was the same. Yeah. I, I had business cards before you needed business cards, all that kind yeah. of stuff. <laughs> um, you know, it's like buying the car to give away. Yeah. Part of that is letting car companies, like ringing Hyundai and saying, I want to I want to give away a car. How many phone calls like that do you think they get a year? Hundreds. Yeah, oh, we've yeah, got, you know, yeah. X thousand people. We reached this and that. No, no, I went, listen, I just want to buy a car. I want a good, I just love a good deal if I can. I'm mm -hmm. willing to spend uh, in excess of $20,000. And they, yeah. were, they, they were very accommodating because they don't have to deal with the dickhead factor. And so <laughs> part of it is just, you know, continually trying to let people know that, sure, if I can't do it, then I'll, if, if I'm that passionate about it, I'll, I'll buy it to review it. But it is a two-way street. Like I'm not going to mm. buy every DJI drone because there's mm. not enough business in drones for that to be justified. So if DJI want me to review stuff, you've got to send it to me to review. Like it's depends on the product. It really depends on the product. Mm -hmm. That's um, <clears throat> I'm loving my vacuum. I, I sold one, Trev. We got a sale. Yeah. <laughs> That's influence, mate. Mate of mine sent it to me. He's uh, shooting around the house. But isn't that a good it. feeling, though? So it's good. actually a nervous feeling most of the time because you're like, oh, fuck, I hope it's as good for them as it is for mm. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the biggest problem is when people go cheap. Like I, I've yeah. got one that's it's a different brand, but it's like twelve, thirteen hundred dollars, and it's it's got a, it goes up to a dock and it vacuums itself out. Like it's empty. Like it empties itself into an empty. <laughs> oh my place. god! It's crazy. I need um, that. <laughs> it, it, it can avoid cables and stuff. It's crazy. But and I say to people, that's the one that my wife likes. It's the first one that stays in our house. The $300, $400 ones have never lasted because they mm -hmm. don't do the job that my wife expects. And if I if, if I used to mop the floors and they weren't any good, she'd make me do it again too, right? Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's not just the vacuum that she's judging. <laughs> um, and so if people go cheap on me, I'm like, you've got to realise you're going to have this experience. So it's mm. nerve-wracking when people say they're going to do it, but then when they ring you or text you and say, oh, this thing's awesome, you're like, yes, it is. <laughs> Like it's validation in a little way. I'm, mm, yeah. I'm kind of glad that, that that's worked. How's the camera going? Is the camera of use or security? Yeah, not yeah, a, yeah. yeah. A, got, yeah. Um, got it at the front. You know what? How's this? Um, the I, sh I was a bit lazy. I got it on a Friday. I think there was one of them. Mm. Maybe it hadn't arrived yet. Um, the vacuum arrived on a Friday. Mm -hmm. The camera oh, arrived right. the on the Monday. Yeah. Yeah. There was a home invasion across the road on the Saturday and I didn't have the camera up. Was that the one where the cops and everything? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. full on, yeah, but um, yeah, it's up yeah, now, yeah. but uh, so handy. I think I'm actually more paranoid when I have my, uh, it's lost connection to my um, phone. Like it's, I need to reconnect it to its, um, to the Wi-Fi. 
uh, but yes. I'm actually holding off. It's still working and getting it onto the um, the SD, SD card, card yeah, yeah. but oh, I'm actually card. less paranoid when I don't check it. Mm. Like I get so yeah, paranoid. No, like, look, to be honest, think about it this the way I think about security cameras. And I've got – I took a photo the other day of a car in my driveway um, and, you know, people – it's the reason my wife's rule is you can't put photos on Facebook that have mess in the background because it's people, we don't want people to think we live in squalor, even though we do. It's a place <laughs> that three kids. Um, so I photo on the driveway and people like zoom into the back. And I've got at the front corner of the house, there's uh, four security cameras like in the exact same spot. And some guy goes, <laughs> you got enough security cameras? And I'm like, dude, I review technology. That's yeah. their, that's how I review them, like for like yeah, yeah. Uh, how do they sit side by side. Um, but I personally don't have notifications for yeah. security camera uh -huh. because what are you going to do <laughs> yeah, yeah what are you going to yeah. run back and bash someone no yeah if if you're in the house asleep the notification is not going to wake you the the breaking of the glass or something will Definitely. it's evidence it's proof it's it's a it's a security check it's a security blanket you know when something happens did that uh, courier leave that parcel i'll look mm. at the camera yeah it's still there it's good yeah. no worries but the one you, you sent me did have a flamethrower on it oh we've got someone <laughs> oh we got someone at the door who is at the door uh, so Charles said in the chat, "There's something on its way for Jess." Do you want to just go down? <laughs> Charles, Charles is, is, is. has spent his. <laughs> I'm worried about Charles' spending now. Check. Here we go. Wish we had that. Right. Okay, here we just go. Just coming. This is. Um, oh, yeah, can Trev see this too? Yeah. Yeah. Have Trev any of the, Yeah, I can, I've got to look to the side. But do you want um, to see if he wants to do a putt? Do you want to see if he wants to do a putt? For Charles, yeah. Thank you. Oh, oh ID. 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 From who? <laughs> Josh. Oh, it's yeah. alcohol. You can have mine. You can have mine. <laughs> George. Yeah. We're, we're recording a podcast at the moment. Yeah. Do you want to be on it for a second? I got another delivery. Yeah, that'll be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Sure You've got another delivery to go. Yeah. Yeah. Hear us. yeah. In other words, he doesn't want his family knowing what he's doing or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You are live on YouTube. Is there, is there a sign saying they're on, on the internet? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I, I did think about printing one out. <laughs> that's all right. That's a downward, that's 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 a downward as, shot. That's as far as we we, we, we got had we had um, Trev and uh, Uber driver up here in in the room, yeah. and she was loving it. Took photos. Yeah, took video, a video of us putting it on really? social media. Yeah. She, did she, she ask did permission for that? No, no. But she also she also <laughs> did a um, a putt. Yeah. As well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'm. Um. I'm just. It's. If you've, you've. I know you fucked up the thousand calculation early on. Oh, which yeah. Was yeah. The funniest thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, oh, fuck, it still falls in the school holidays because, like, as I said, you know, on day on day off, I would have totally flown down because it would have been great. But, oh, um, that would have been so yeah. fun. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. I in comes George. <laughs> wow. If this is from Charles, <laughs> yeah, is. Charles has got his mum's Uber account <laughs> for sure because he's not 18 yet. Is he 18? Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if you can still buy our You just need to show 18. the license, I guess. Yeah. On the receipt. I mean, it's, the, it's the recipient yeah, yeah. that needs to show it because they're yeah, handing yeah. it over. They have to hand it over to someone who's over 18. Yeah. What's the worry now, Trev? Trev, in 2021, what's the biggest worry you have with your kids and, and technology out of everything that you're saying? Snapchat's my biggest worry still um, yeah. because it's unseen. You know, yeah. like my 14-year-old's on Snapchat and I really wish he wasn't. I really wish I would have blocked it early on and just yeah. stayed the course. But anyway, um, regrets, we have a few uh, because you don't know what they're saying. It's dis yeah. It all disappears and you can't uh, have yeah. conversations about it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that, the, that concept of what are you sharing worries me greatly because, mm -hmm. you know, what kids share, cameras everywhere, carrying a camera around, the opportunity to you know, just show something, oh, man, yeah. that, that just freaks me out and I don't know how yeah. we properly stop that um, uh -huh. other than making them put the fear of God into them. Like that's what I do. I just go, like I'll show an example. My son is smart enough to understand now, but my daughter, when she gets a phone in, in, in well, that'll be next year, shit, at the end of next year, um, I will show her how I can keep a copy of a photo she sends me without her knowing. Uh -huh. And once she sees that, I'll be like, you remember, I can put that anywhere on the internet. And that's the problem, yeah. right? Everything's on the internet. Once it's on the internet, it's, it's there for life. Uh, that's still our biggest challenge as a society. It's not Donald Trump being on Facebook. It's, you know, social media sharing of content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. Look how quick it happened. Like from I had my first mobile phone at uh, in grade yeah. six, Nokia 5210, banana mm -hmm. color. Um, by the time... Yeah, even like 16, 17, it was, a, it was a camera phone. But like all the stuff from my uh, era was 
deleted because the phones were so shit. Can, I, get, can yes. I just say, what Ch- Charles uh, just said, uh, I just got a notification from Uber Eats that says I can now order alcohol without ID. Thanks, GB. <laughs> 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 also, there you go. That's how you don't let your kids... Interesting. That is wow. a hack. That is a great hack, isn't oh it? Oh my god! If you have, if, if you have I kind of yeah. want George to try that now. <laughs> yeah, Charles needs Char- to try. Charles, so Charles, try, try and Charles, buy Charles. yourself something send nice. Send us more, and then we won't no, show no, ID. No, no, no. no, no, no. no. George, Charles your, needs to with, send himself something. No, yeah, Charles, yeah, so Charles, with your parents by your side, <laughs> yeah. um, could you fix this for us? Yeah, Order yeah. This some is... wine for your mum, but you answer the door. That's the critical thing, right? Because we've, yeah. we've proven you can get it to the door, but yeah. You now need to be the one that picks it up. Yeah, yeah. How crazy that we're talking about things that kids should be, we're, we're worried about our kids, yeah, yeah. and there it is. <laughs> we're all just worried about Josh. That's yeah, yeah, that's, right. that's very true. Uh, Trey, <laughs> thanks so much, yeah. mate, for all of the support over the last uh, thousand episodes. We've we've uh, seen you throughout the uh, the journey being, you know, along the sidelines and involved, and, and that means a lot. Boys, oh, seriously, I love the show, and I don't say that because I've known Josh for a little bit longer than the show's been going, but I just, I do, having you in my life gives me people in my life. It's like, you know, having people in a room and just having people, because I work alone, you know, so I think that's the case for a lot of people. They enjoy this because it's like being part of the banter, and I think that's mm-hmm. what you've nailed beautifully, and I think you've come back to the basics again this year, which I applaud, and mm-hmm. I think you're smashing it. So here's to another seven years and, you know, millions of episodes. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Trev. Trev. And uh, also uh, Charles says he doesn't have Uber Eats in Bathurst, sadly. Oh. So there you go. I do just have one more thing to play on that note. Yes. Uh, it's all about Trev's support over the years and the Gronk squad can get a bit fired up at each other. Okay. Yeah. Listen, just on Ben Ford, and we have to talk about this, um, I believe I believe I remember an Instagram story whereby you re-storied his story mm-hmm. uh, yes. where he was you know, talking about being a Gronk and yeah. on, the, on the Gronk squad. He was verified Gronk. I'm the fucking number one ticket holder of <laughs> verified Gronk. You, so, you, yeah, are king, okay. you are King Gronk. He's a Johnny come lady yeah. lately. Verified Gronk. You know what? If we've got King Gronk there, yeah. Queen Gronk, Gemma Watts, imagine them arm in arm walking into yeah, a big live that. show I'd that we're putting that. on. And Ben Ford would be holding the fucking ring. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Trev. Um, oh, that's good. Cheers, boys. Awesome. Trev. Thanks, mate.